Hello everyone, Joshua Myers here, and today I am going to be talking about five things I liked about Halloween Kills. So let's get right into it. We interrupted an important experiment in progress. I am shocking. Oh, Pennywise depends. Hey, how are you guys doing? Uh, welcome back. Uh, it's been a while. Well, not really. Uh, well, depends on when this video gets uploaded. But today I figured I decided to talk about five things I liked about Halloween Kills. Which, I do like the movie. I've posted my review of Halloween Kills on this channel. If you want to go and see my thoughts on it, mine and Josh's thoughts, we both liked the movie. We weren't one of those haters. I've watched it since a few times, and I still rather enjoy Halloween Kills. And that's more I can say about Halloween 2018. Because with Halloween 2018, I basically... I wasn't one of the, you know, fan boys, you know? Like, I wasn't, like, you know, going gaga over the movie when it first came out. In fact, I watched it. I was excited for the movie because it was my first Halloween Michael Myers movie in the theater. And I was excited about the idea of going back to the original movie in a sense you know and the original version of michael myers but then i watched it and i was like there's some issues here definitely some issues i had so i did my review yeah and that was after like i think maybe a couple times i watched it since so i watched it a few more times since then and yeah i just started to notice more and more problems with halloween 2018 and it when i eventually do my ranking you would notice that it would be lower on my list than some other people. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure if anybody else has had that experience with Halloween 2018. So, going into Halloween Kills, I was very cautiously optimistic. You know? And I saw the trailers, and I, in my personal opinion, I did not like the trailers. I thought they gave away too much. Um, you know, uh, the only, with exceptions, I liked the first teaser that dropped. Uh, where it showed, like, basically it was just a scene where in Joe Laurie in the back of the truck with Allison and Karen and basically being like, seeing the firefighters and her screaming, No! No! You know, like, uh, like, and screaming, Let it burn! Let it burn! <laughs> you know, that was a good teaser. Not gonna lie. That was a good teaser. Got me hyped for Halloween Kills. Uh, then the second teaser came. It was still a good teaser. Um, not as good as the first one, because it showed a lot more, showed bit, like actual death things in the movie. Kind of wish they had saved that for the actual film. Then the first ever official full-length trailer dropped, and man, it spoiled a hell of a lot. Especially after seeing the movie, it's like, man, it really spoiled a lot. So I thought, and I knew that was going to be the case, so I had very little confidence in the movie. Um... I thought it was going to be about as good as Halloween 2018, if not worse, so... Uh... And then the second, like, the final trailer dropped. Still the same problem, you know? Not as bad as the first trailer, like, first full trailer, but... Still the same problem. So I was getting less and less excited for Halloween Kills, and then... Uh... I had to go see it, because it's a Halloween Michael Myers movie, and I've reviewed a decent chunk on my old channel, so I was like... You know what? Gotta go do it. So, I was so excited to see a movie in the theater because because of uh, uh, because of the pand pandemic and everything, I haven't been able to really go out and do much. So, uh, last year I only really went to see two movies, and I was Spiral from the Book of Saul and Howling Kills, which I seen those both with Josh. So, saw one movie in the theater during the beginning of the year with Spiral, and then saw enough like second movie during the end of the year with Helen Kills. Wait, actually I didn't saw Helen Kills in the theater. My bad. Let me scratch that. Uh, I saw Helen Kills on Peacock. Uh, with Peacock Premium, because again, it's during the fall. Not only did I have to worry about the pandemic, but I also had to worry about the flu, so there's that. But I couldn't go, so we got Peacock Premium, which we still, well, okay, we technically don't have it because it was on one Joshua's accounts like his Apple ID account and he no longer has that so both that and uh, HBO Max so he's gonna have to create whole new accounts for HBO Max and Peacock Premium. Anyway so we watched it on my 4k TV in here and 
we loved it. We loved Halloween Kills. It was a surprise. In fact, I noticed that with the couple movies that I've seen last year, at least a couple horror movies, uh, the other one being Spiral, I thought Spiral was going to suck. But I ended up loving it. I did a review on my old channel. I plan on maybe eventually doing a re-review of Spiral. Um, and I've seen it since then, and I still love Spiral. That's just kind of my history with Halloween Kills. So, just to let you know, I'm not one of those fanboys. Because again, I came out of Halloween 2018. Not really. I mean, there were aspects I did love about it. But then, it's like, yeah, I was one of those like, fanboys that were going all gaga over the movie. I felt like there was a lot of things that could have been improved. And then, I was very skeptical about Halloween Kills. Especially after some of the trailers were dropped. And I thought the trailers looked horrible. I even re have re-edited the t trailers. Like the two full trailers. Which I plan dropping on my main channel. If you go want to check those out. Once I get them dropped. And I'll put the link to my main channel. In the description box below. So you guys can check it out. So again, like I said, I'm not one of those fanboys. There's a lot of movies in the Howling franchise I do not like, and there's a lot of movies in the franchise I do love, and then some I'm just kind of like, eh, could take it or leave it. So, today I'm going to discuss the five things that I personally liked about Howling Kills. And the fifth thing I liked about Howling Kills is, is I liked the cinematography. The cinematography, it was a lot better than in Howling 2018. Howling 2018 cinematography was not bad. I just had a problem with the fact that in a lot of shots, there was not that iconic blue lighting from the original Halloween, which in my opinion, it's like, if you're, if you're going to make a, like, spiritual sequel to the original, say all the other sequels don't matter, then at least you have to keep some consistencies, one of which is the kind of blue tint lighting that was present in the original Halloween, you know? And they didn't do that, in fact they did kind of like a goldish tent, you know, so, and I was a big fan of that, so, it was great to see that Hound Kills, uh, did that, uh, throughout the film, the fourth thing that I liked, actually, were, actually, the characters, I actually did dug the characters, in fact, there were, so, here's the thing, I already liked Laurie Strode in Howling 2018, thought Jamie McCurse did a great job in that film, that was one of the few things in Howling 2018 that I didn't have a problem with, there were some characters I did have a problem with, like for example, uh, I mean, I liked Allison, I liked Andy Matichek in the 2018 film decently enough, but I liked her even more in Howling Kills, so that's one thing. But then there was characters like, uh, Cameron, uh, Allison's boyfriend, I thought he was a complete scumbag character, I did not like him, you know, I, he was one of the characters I did want to see die, but in Howling Kills, he, they actually did make me like Cameron, actually, to the point where he, when it came to his death scene, I actually was sad for not only him, but also Allison, too. So, and I was very shocked that they killed him off. Another character I didn't really care that much for was, uh, Karen, uh, Lori's daughter. A lot of it was mostly due to Judy Greer's portrayal, like, performance in the first film. I thought her performance came off as very dull, very flat, and that didn't scream like someone who had been through this traumatic event and that resents her mother and all that. It didn't scream like that. I, I That would have been a character I would have not minded if they killed off, you know, and had just been, you know, you know, would say if kill off in, you know, the first few minutes of Halloween Kills and then it was just about Lori and Allison. But, uh, they actually did got me to like, uh, Karen as a character. I actually did like her. And a lot of that is because they actually let Judy Greer emote more. You know, they gave her more to do in that. And I thought Judy Greer did great, actually. And I did got to like her character to the point where, again, where she died at the end, which I didn't saw coming, even, you know, when I was thinking, because I was like, yeah, I would like that to happen, but no, they wouldn't do that, you know, because these are, the, you know, the fresh meat of this new series. They wouldn't kill them off, you know. If they were going to kill off any of the Strode women first, it'd probably be Lori, you know, and then kind of do a passing of the torch. Uh, but no, I was like, not only did it got me to like Karen, and then it's like they killed her off at the end, and I was like, when I saw that, I was just like, whoa. And on the one hand, was I like, whoa, but because it surprised me in that, 
uh, and I was like, and I wasn't clapping for the reason I thought I would with that. I was clapping because it shocked me, and I did grow to like Karen as a character, and then like Judy Greer's performance, that it kind of saddened me, and by the same time too, it shocked me in that, and the shock was just, I wasn't clapping because, yeah, the character sucks. I'm glad she's dead, you know? Uh, no, I wasn't like that, you know? I, if it was, uh, if it had, if it was the version of Karen in Halloween 2018 and, uh, her, Judy Greer's performance from Halloween 2018, I would have been like that. But I actually did like her in this movie, so, and just, in general, I liked most of the side characters, too. I like I did like Tommy Doyle, I did like Anthony Michael Hall's performance in the movie. Although, I will admit, the whole constantly saying evil dies tonight got on my nerves, but uh, we even talked about that in my review, so, um, uh, but also, too, uh, I also did, like, uh, Robert Longstreet as Lonnie, and, like, Lonnie was a character I did not like in the original because it was bowling taught me, and, uh, he was a little shit, but, uh, uh, Robert Longstreet gave this performance and that in Halloween. Because, in fact, honestly, I actually liked Lonnie more than Tommy, actually. I wanted, personally, I would have liked, uh, regards to one of the legacy characters, I would have preferred to see Lonnie as the main legacy character besides, like, side character besides Lori, you know, like, to go on with Lori and that, which, he, he is one of the big players and that. So, and then they kill him off, and again, it was sad to see. The third thing I liked about Howling Kills is that there was no holding back. There was no kind of, you know, it, it's basically anybody, anybody was a target, anybody could just die, you know. There was no holdbacks and it showed because again, a lot of characters had died off. A lot of legacy characters too. You know, we had, again, we had Lonnie died, we had Tommy die, we had Sheriff Brackett died, and could have I liked some of them to have more of a bigger role? Yeah, I will admit, but at the same time, too, that was, like, shocking. I didn't thought that was going to happen, you know? I thought maybe a couple of them would have died. Honestly, I thought, honestly, out of any of the legacy characters, I thought, like, side characters, I thought Lindsay was the one going to die, but no. Uh, Lindsay survived. She was attacked, though, by my Michael, uh, which that was a great sequence, too, in the park and that. That actually kind of inspired me for my next Halloween short film, which I'll talk to you about. Uh, at least the setting and everything for my next Halloween short fan film after Howling the Kills of Michael Myers. So I'll get into that after. It, it just depends on how successful my next short film is. If it's about as successful as the previous one, Howling the Shape of Michael Myers, then I will go ahead and greenlight uh, a third movie. Again, I like the fact that this film did not hold back and some of the kills while like okay so the kills did something i talked about they were because my problem with halloween 2018 is that they were gory but not shocking the most shocking death in halloween 2018 for me personally was that michael myers killed a kid who was like around 12 13 on screen for the first time we never saw michael myers kill a, kill a child ever i mean sure in halloween 4 and five, his whole goal was to kill a ten-year-old uh, with Jamie Lloyd, and then Halloween six, his whole goal was to kill a newborn baby. <laughs> uh, but he, we never actually see him do that, and he did in Halloween 2018. So that was the only real shocking death in Halloween 2018. There was a lot more shocking deaths than here, and you know, it it wasn't very gory, which was my problem. Now I don't have a problem with gore, you know. I think it's pointless but if you like I there's some films I actually love that has tons of gore uh like uh John Carpenter's The Thing back here that has a shit ton of gore and I love the hell out of it uh Reanimator that has a shit ton of go gore I love that too uh Hatchet the Hatchet series has a shit ton of gore and I love those movies too which I'll be eventually talking about Hatchet Reanimator and the thing at some point on this channel so but yeah so there's some movies oh Hellraiser is another one you know that couple of them I actually got the posters to I got well I got the poster to the thing 
uh, Hellraiser, and Reanimator. And they have a crap ton of gore. Crap ton. So, no, I'm not totally against gore. I'm more against it when it, there's no need for it. You know? Um, and the original Halloween was that example. And in fact, the original Halloween knew not to really play off the gore factor in that. And guess what? It was rather effective. You know? I mean, it spawned this big franchise which seemed to miss the point about the original in regards, regards to that because each film got gorier and gorier. To the point in Halloween 6 we fucking got, you know, a guy getting electrocuted to death, which I will admit is an awesome kill. A guy getting out, an asshole father getting electrocuted to death and his head fucking exploding. Which again, awesome kill, especially for that kind of character, but at the same time too, misses the point of the original Halloween. So, uh, so that's my problem. I've gotten some people, especially over on my main channel, arguing with me. It's like saying, oh, you can't do a Halloween movie like a modern day Halloween movie like they did back in 1978. Well, guess what, asshole? I actually did made a Halloween movie like they did back in 1978. No gore. In fact, there was only one kill in the movie. I'm not going to say who or where it pops out that. The only thing I will say, you don't even see it. And guess what? My, like, just look. Look at the views and look at the likes and look at all the com positive comments. So I'm even saying one of the more different fan films out there. So tell me again, asshole, how you can't do a you can't do a heavy movie like they did back in 1978 and today because you need to have the gore and all that different stuff. Eh. Tell me again. I dare you. But anyway, so yeah, I've gotten some arguments with that, um, and it's like very dumb arguments, you know. I mean, if that's your opinion, that's your opinion. But don't be like... Especially when I've shown that, yes, you could still do a movie like the original Halloween. In today. Like, in modern day. With no gore. Not very many kills. And do some suspenseful stuff. But my second movie, Halloween the Kills of Michael Myers, if you're somebody who's looking for more kills, I'm going to add a bit more kills. Not as much as Halloween kills, but, or as much as some of the films, but, you know, like, a bit more than I did with my first film. So, and, you know, uh, with Halloween kills, my thing that I liked is that while it wasn't gory, they were brutal, and that's what I'm doing with my film, Halloween the Kills of Michael Myers. They're not going to be gory, but they're going to be brutal. I mean, look at films like the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That has no blood in it. Or gore. If you go back and watch the film. And pay attention. But there's people still to this day. This very day. Even newer people. Like like younger people. Who was probably born like would say. Anywhere between 5 to 10 years ago. Who would still swear. That the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Was one of the bloodiest films of all time and it had no blood I'm trying to what I'm trying to say is sometimes less is more what you don't see is scarier than what you do see and what you don't know is scarier than what you do know An example of what you don't know is scarier than what you do know this whole pandemic situation we still have very little idea on where exactly this virus came from you know there's so much misinformation being spread around the internet about you know how to defend yourself against this virus and all that stuff or the state of this virus and guess what look how people are acting now because they're afraid they're afraid because they don't know what the hell is going on and it's also an example of something that you can't see either because we can't physically see you know this virus we can't just an example of that because here's the thing, I've studied it in film for about, um, 
I I was I started doing films when I was 13 years old, and I'm now 25, about to turn 26. I turned 26 in November, so um, so I've been doing this for quite some time. So I definitely know a thing or two about this stuff. Okay, I'm getting off I'm getting off track here. So uh, so that's the thing I liked about third thing I liked about Halloween Kills is that while yes it was brutal, there were some brutal ass kills, even some makeup, but it wasn't as gory as Halloween 2018, and tried to shy away from it more so, especially in some aspects. I like that. The second thing I liked about Halloween Kills is the music by John Carpenter, Cody Carpenter, and Daniel Davies. I love the score to this film. Uh, now, do I like it as much as the score for Halloween 2018? I don't know. I, like, I don't know if I like it about as much or more so. I would have to probably, you know, like, pop in the soundtracks and that, which I do have the Halloween 2018 soundtrack, just a standard soundtrack on CD. Uh, at some point, I do plan on maybe getting, picking up the expanded soundtrack that came out. And maybe eventually, too, I'll uh, pick up the uh, Halloween Kills vinyl soundtrack because I do got a vinyl record player over there so and I don't have any vinyl so not might be the first vinyl I pick up but you know I'll have to pop them in play them play the tracks more specifically play my favorite tracks and see which of the favorite tracks on each soundtrack I like more and if I like the my favorite tracks on how the Halloween 20 team score then I would say that's the better score, but if I like the track, like my favorite tracks of Helen Kills, then I would say that's a better score. But either way, the Helen Kills soundtrack is pretty damn good. Actually, I love it, and I'm excited to see uh, all three of them come back to composer music for Helen Ends. Uh, and, you know, I've never seen the original movie, like this original movie, and that, but. Uh, I'm actually excited to listen to the score for the Firestarter remake because it's done by John Carpenter, Cody Carpenter, and Daniel Davies. So I'm actually really excited about that to listen to that score. And again, I've never seen the original Firestarter, so I'm probably going to have to do that whenever uh, before um, the new one comes out, and I'll do a review of that. Okay, so the number one thing I love about Howling Hill. Is James Hugh Courtney as Michael Myers. In fact, I actually liked him more in this film than in Halloween 2018. In fact, which is saying a lot because I love his performance in Halloween 2018. He was one of the best things about that movie. Um, you know, and I think honestly, he's one of the better portrayals of Michael Myers we've gotten from the franchise. Again, I actually do plan on doing a ranking of the Myers portrayals, so I'm not going to spoil it. But he is definitely neck and neck with my number one. Neck and neck. That's how good he is. So, I also like the overall look. I like the burnt. The only issue I do have with the burnt thing, and it's just a nitpick. It's just something I would have done. And that's, uh, you know, considering how latex is and that, I would have had, and I think this would have been creepier too, I would have had it to where it would have melted onto his flesh. And in sense, literally became his face, because... You know, in the sense that Max is already his face, so if it just melted onto his flesh and that to a point where you can't take it off, it literally would have become his face, and I think that would have been creepier. But I digress. The Max is still cool. Uh, his performance is really great. You know, he has some really great scenes. My favorite of his scenes would probably have to be the firefighter slaughter, where he goes in and uh, slaughters the all the first responders. At the beginning of the film that is awesome scene you know and probably my just favorite scene in general my favorite kill of his is probably in Halloween 2018 well Halloween kills uh, I don't know there's just such great ones uh, but yeah James Joe Corney is awesome as Michael Myers one of these days be cool to meet him especially since I portray Michael Myers in my fan film so you know so, uh, two Michaels meeting each other, that'd be pretty cool. And that was five things I liked, or loved in this case, about Halloween Kills. So, uh, tell me down in the comments below, do you agree with my, you know, do you agree with my opinions here? Are these the reasons why you, like, five reasons why you like Halloween Kills? Because I know there's people did. 
um, no matter what the haters think. Um, so, like, you genuinely love talent kills. Um, because there's some people out there, and again, I'll discuss this in my upcoming, like, my second, up, like, the next episode of my podcast. Uh, you know, there's some people out there who think that people who genuinely love Halloween Kills didn't really love Halloween Kills aren't being paid by Blumhouse. I think that's just dumb. Again, I'll talk about that in the podcast more in detail uh, for the Graveyard Shift podcast. But yeah, so uh, just tell me down below, like, list five reasons why you like or love Halloween Kills, you know, if they in line with me or not. And don't forget to click that like button. Uh, and if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. I'm a very new channel. Well, technically not. I've been on YouTube for quite some time. More so with my main channel, Blood Moon Productions. That's my film studio. Uh, where I do free scores, like movie re-edits, my fan films, and stuff like that. Uh, but this is where I'm placing all my original content. So, it, uh, all the support would be great so that I could give you guys better content. And thank you guys for watching, and see you next time. <laughs>